here we have an HP Spectre laptop or motherboard that was mailed in for repair. The customer mailed in the motherboard only and not the laptop. And he mentioned, let's read what the customer wrote. Description, I sent my device to a local repair shop, but they were not able to fix the issue. I think they changed one of the USB-C ports. That's all what the customer wrote. He thinks that they changed one of the USB-C ports and obviously they were not able to fix the board. So let's take a look at the USB-C port and see what's going on and then we'll inspect the rest of the board. I showed this motherboard in yesterday's video where I mentioned that we got this as a mail-in and today we're gonna be working on it. So if you look at the USB-C ports, we do see a sticker here. So it's very likely that they replaced this USB-C port. Let's flip the board and take a look at the back. So this is the USB-C port that's factory. And this is the one that the customer or the repair shop soldered. I do not have a reason to believe that the soldering on this one is bad. So we're going to keep it as is. For now. Let's go back to front of the board. Just quickly inspect this area here. Meter in diode mode. I want to check to see if we have a short here. And we do. We have a short here. A short in this area could be a very good indication that we may have a problem with the CPU. If we take a look at the rest of the board, we do see that this chip was replaced and this one was replaced. We can tell by the flux. It's very possible that those chips, those BGA chips, were not soldered on properly and maybe they are bridging from under, creating a possible short on this chip. Let's go ahead and start by desoldering those chips and see what happens. And people always ask what temperatures I'm using for my hot air. I'm almost always at 440 C. And I'm at maximum airspeed. On GPUs, I use maximum heat, 500 C. On boards with less layers, I use about 300. So I removed both chips. And I'm just going to go over these with my soldering iron, make sure everything is nice and clean. Let's go ahead and see if we still have a short here. If we do not have a short here, then most likely the cause of the problem are those USB-C power ICs. Meter in diode mode, and we still have a short. So what happens if we remove this chip? And we're going to do the same thing here. Just quickly go over those pads and make sure no two pads are bridging.
And let's see, do we still have a short? And the short is gone. We no longer have a short. Great. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this chip and we're gonna replace those two and we'll test. Right now the customer only mailed in the motherboard but we do have a similar laptop that we can use to test. We'll just plug this motherboard on the other laptop and we'll see if it's working after we're done soldering those chips. So let's grab a chisel tip and the wick and we're gonna have to clean off solder. And now let's go ahead and clean solder from here. Awesome. The power of having a good wick and flux. You can purchase the wick off our site. And we are one of the major resellers of Amtec Flux. You can also purchase that from our site. Just log in to northridgefix.com. And search for Amtec 559 or just 559. Or you can just click on shop and you'll see all the items and tools. A few days ago, I was on the phone with Inventec, the makers of Amtec Flux. And they mentioned that they are no longer working with Amtec Direct. So Amtec Direct is no longer their distributors. And right at this moment, we are one of their major resellers. We have a new shipment of Flux coming in in about a week. We still have some Flux left to last us until next week. But a new shipment should be here in about five to seven days. So let's go ahead and solder those ICs and see what happens. Okay, so I do have two of those big ICs. We should have more, but that's the box that I grabbed right now. We have a couple of boxes for exactly the same IC. And the reason we stock those ICs is because I work on a lot of HP spec laptops.
And you see, the reason I like this tweezer from Best, the one I'm using now, is because it opens up wide. There's no way I can grab that chip with any of the tweezers that we have in here except for this one. Because look at the opening. This one is from Mechanic, and the other one is from Best. It opens up a lot more. You do not want to use this tweezer when dealing with size 201 components or size 402 components or 1005. You use this one for big chips like this. It's a fine tweezer, but it opens up a lot. Okay, so I think we should be good. And just align it like this. I think we're good. I'm gonna hold it and apply hot air. And the chip made a connection. Now we can reflow. All right, so the chip settled in place. I'm gonna increase hot air and back to 470 or 440. I mean, you have to know your hot air station when working with any scenario. And that's it. The chip is soldered nicely. And we made a huge mistake. A huge mistake. Pin number one should be here and not here. Wow. How did I make that mistake? How did I make that mistake? We're gonna have to clean everything all over and we're gonna have to re -ball this chip not now that's a $20 chip what can you do I got too excited that's what happened let's start all over and I have six million things to do today. And now we're gonna waste more time working on this. I do not know how many of you were able to spot that I soldered that chip the wrong way. Because if you did, if you were able to spot that when I first soldered that chip, it means you're paying attention. I mean, it's always the person who's looking from the outside can see more than the person who's doing the work or who's on the inside. Just like if you are watching a soccer game and you're looking at your TV and you're wondering why didn't that guy pass the ball to that person? Why didn't the guy go that way? You are a person looking at the game from the outside and the person looking from the outside can see more than the person who is inside, inside the game. The person who is playing or soldering. I didn't see that coming but it happened. Okay, so let's try again. And let's make sure that we solder the chip the right way this time. 
I mean, I'm glad that this happened. So you can see that mistakes do happen. No one is perfect. And now all we have to do is make sure that pin number one is on the bottom right, like we have it now. Okay, so grabbing that chip is not enough. We have to press down on it to make sure it's flush and flat with the board. I mean, this is a big chip. At any time you are dealing with a big chip, it's always challenging because you have to make sure that that chip does not move when you are reflowing. Otherwise, you're going to mess up the solder balls under it. So I think we're good. Okay, and the chip made a connection. Let's go to full speed. And we should be good. And we're gonna test again in diet mode. And we have a short again. So we have a short again after installing that chip. That chip is a bridge to the CPU. Based on my experience working on those boards, the problem is a CPU issue. I did spend enough time working on a similar issue in the past, and I came to a conclusion that this is caused by the CPU. And that's why when I first started working on this board, I said a short here could be a CPU issue because I experienced that before and I spent a lot of time working on that issue before but maybe there's a lesson in this video that mistakes can happen and another lesson would be not to waste a lot of time on one single device especially if you know that you've worked on a similar problem before and you already spent hours working on that similar problem before. You do not need to replicate the waste of time working on the same exact problem as the one that was deemed a no fix in a previous repair. So we're gonna just be nice and clean it. And we're gonna have to send this back to the customer. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it's a no fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.